Janet Jackson is a solidified legend in the music industry. If her ascension from the most prestigious family in pop music history didn't tell you, her track record certainly will. But everything wasn't always so opulent or even successful within her career. Ms. Jackson went from unsuccessful beginnings to groundbreaking pop icon, to having everything she worked for stripped from her and her legacy almost entirely erased because of something as simple as a nipple which later turned out to be even more complex, and it's time we talk about it. Janet was by no means just getting by on her last name, and had a lot to prove with not only her brother being Michael Jackson, but being a part of one of the most talented families to touch the industry, the Jackson family. Starting in 1982, Janet kicked off her music career and released two unsuccessful albums, one self-titled, and her sophomore album Dream Street in 1984 which was described as bland dance music with no distinctive personality traits incorporated into the music. With 1986's Control, which is often referred to as the clear landmark in her career, she transformed into a pop icon seemingly in the blink of an eye, teaming up with fame producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis to not only create a new sound, but music history. The album was a personal album reflecting her life at the time. The album seen all of its singles go on to reach the top five, and the album itself went on to sell over 10 million copies and is regarded as a blueprint for artists such as Britney Spears, Rihanna, and many more to come after her. She had affirmed her dominance with this album. In years to follow, Janet would continue her reign and release highly praised and now classic albums that continued to break down barriers. And she was also regarded as an important force for speaking out on social issues. More so, she established herself as a symbol, fashion icon, and had impeccable dance skills that would be used for a lifetime. The albums continued to sell tens of millions of copies, and with her 1993 release, Janet, in which she dropped her last name as a statement for people discrediting her hard work and success, she signed the biggest contract in music history during that time. The contract was reportedly worth between 40 and 50 million dollars making her the highest paid artist during that time, which is a major accomplishment, not only for women, but for a black woman to achieve something so astounding is amazing, especially when your brother is Michael Jackson. She just kept carving out a name for herself and breaking barriers. With Janet the album, it saw Janet's official push to the global stage and her official settling as a sex symbol. She continued to talk about important topics, such as safe sex and women's sexuality. The album also spawned six top 10 hits, but the greatness didn't stop there. With the release of 1997's Velvet Rope, which is regarded as another milestone in her career, she signed a new contract with Virgin Records worth $80 million, which was the largest recording contract in history at that time. Which goes on to show, Janet was truly a woman in control and had the pretty perfect reign. After 2001's All For You and attaining so much success and having a pretty much spotless legacy that was revered, it seemed only right that Miss Jackson took the stage to perform at the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, and it's safe to say, things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to. And the aftermath saw Janet, a woman who had been so unapologetic about sex, femininity, and women being expressive with their sexuality, while maintaining her class, being cornered and pressured to apologizing for the accidental exposure of her nipple. And this incident would be regarded as Nipplegate. During the show, she brought out Justin Timberlake, and even with this segment of the show being Justin Timberlake's song and action, Janet still somehow ended up receiving all of the blame. In a statement released by Janet's publicist, they revealed what was actually supposed to happen. Justin was supposed to pull away the rubber bustier to reveal a red lace bra. The garment collapsed and her breast was accidentally revealed. After the event, Timberlake told a publication, Hey man, we love giving you all something to talk about. Meanwhile, Jackson was forced to release a written statement and a video apology and went on a press tour for years being apologetic about the incident. Jackson then released her eighth studio album, The Meet a Joe, but it was her worst selling album ever on a commercial level during that time. She was blacklisted by Clear Channel Communications, which at the time owned MTV and radio as well. She had relatively no way to promote her music anymore. It also stopped further projects. She was supposed to star in a movie produced by ABC but was fired. Janet was also not allowed to attend the Grammy Awards, while Timberlake was not only allowed to attend, he was asked to perform. Not only was he milking the press from Nipplegate, he was milking his high-profile breakup with Britney Spears. Justin's career completely launched through the controversy, and he was even solidifying his pop icon status during that time. Justin gave a half-hearted apology two years later during the release of his second album, 
Future's love sounds. How convenient is that? He went on to say, in my honest opinion now, I could have handled it better. I'm part of a community that considered themselves artists, and if there was something I could have done in her defense, that was more than I realized I would have. But the other half of me was like, wow, we still haven't found the weapons of mass destruction and everybody cares about this. I probably got 10% of the blame, and that says something about society. I think that America is harsher on women, and I think that America is, you know, unfairly harsh on ethnic people. But the true controversy of this story didn't stop there. It only maximized when it was announced that Justin was going to be performing at the Super Bowl again, and Janet was not accompanying him. People were outraged that he had practically no blame in the matter, and it went on to even put a damper on his career after the controversial release of Man of the Woods, a lackluster halftime show, and a go against Prince's sacred wishes. It seemed as Timberlake himself was having his very own nipple game moment, while of course not as severe, seeing that his career wasn't essentially destroyed. However, it did place more controversy around him. To this day, Justin is still being called out and pushed to give Janet an apology, with Bette Miller earlier this week tweeting, Justin Timberlake publicly apologized to his wife for holding hands with another actress after having too much to drink, but nothing else happened. Who cares? He held another woman's hand, BFD. So when is Janet Jackson's boo gonna get an apology? Hashtag justice for Janet. It has also been highly requested to allow Janet to perform at the Super Bowl again, but so far, the signs point to nothing happening. It's also worth noting that after this incident, Janet's career never quite recovered commercially and her songs haven't topped the charts since. Justin isn't the only man who should give Janet an apology though. It was later revealed that a head figure at CBS that goes by the name of Les Moonves allegedly wanted to destroy Janet's career after the halftime show It was quite persistent with his demands. He allegedly went on to let Justin off the hook because he seemed more apologetic than Janet. Moonves allegedly ordered Viacom properties, VH1 and MTV, and all Viacom-owned radio stations to stop playing Janet's songs and music videos. Moonves was angered again by Jackson's 2011 book, True You, A Journey to Finding and Loving Yourself, published by Simon & Schuster, which was owned by CBS. Ironically, the man who was so furious over Nipple was accused of sexual misconduct in 2018 and resigned from CBS. He was also called paying off an actress and has an extensive history of abuse of power being highlighted. Although Janet is now a celebrated music icon, even going on to receive the Billboard Icon Award in 2018 and having a few tributes dedicated to her, it wasn't always that easy. I can't help but to think, with her separating herself from her family name and being outright just who she is, if Nipplegate would have never happened, would she have been one of the few living legends to have a spotless legacy? Albeit, retrospectively speaking, it wasn't something that was bad, but it did cause damage to her career. But nonetheless, the grace she showed in the following years after the incident truly helped showcase her unbreakable spirit. She is undoubtedly one of the most influential artists alive today and deserves her flowers and much more while she's still here.